Hello and welcome. I'm Maudile Sharafai Suf. Thank you for joining us on View from the Top. I love traveling, just like many people. But, you know, like many travelers know, the hardest part about traveling is planning that trip. Booking flights, getting visas, reviewing and booking hotels and transportation. It can be a full-time job in itself, trying to figure out all the different offers and deals available online. The good news is there are businesses out here out there that want to help you do away with the headache of trip planning and make traveling the pleasurable undertaking that it should be. The online travel agencies had gross bookings exceeding $150 billion last year, representing 38% of the global online market and 13% of the global travel market. OTAs, customer segments, pan across business, leisure, and group and the online travel sales figure is estimated to be growing at about 12 percent annually with such prospects for growth it is not surprising that the ota market space is currently at its dynamic best while the existing players are continuously expanding through strategic alliances and investments there is a simultaneous influx of established and new names into the online travel domain in nigeria wakanao.com is one of those making waves. And the CEO, Obina Ekeze, joins me on View from the Top today. And I want to thank you very much, Obina. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Here is a brief biography before we launch into our conversation. Obina Ekeze was born on August 22, 1975 in Port Harcourt. He left Nigeria in 1993 and traveled to the United States to complete his last two years of high school at Worcester Academy in Massachusetts. And in 1995, he got a scholarship to study and play basketball at the University of Maryland at College Park, where he got a degree in mechanical engineering and business. He also completed the IBM Total Quality Management Business Program. In the 1999 NBA draft, he was picked in the second round and joined the Vancouver Grizzlies. Throughout the six years that followed, Obina played for five different NBA teams and was also of the a member of the Nigerian team at the World Championships of Basketball in Athens, Greece in 1998. He retired from professional basketball in 2007 and moved back to Nigeria to pursue his new dream. He co-founded a travel website in 2008, ziptravel.com, while continuing to build an even bigger website at the same time. Now with a staff strength of about 600, wakanao.com has become one of the fastest growing and largest internet travel sites in Africa. But tell me, first of all, why should people book tickets on wakanao.com if they can access the internet and book it themselves from, uh, from the airlines or from the hotel websites? Well, um, wakanao.com is, is a consideration of all the different airlines um, and operators, both for airlines, hotels, uh, grand, grand transportation companies, um, so we were able to give the customer an informed um, um, platform where he or she can look at all the different options at the best prices and choose from the best options available for, for him or her for her travel. Whether it's flights, whether it's hotels, whether it's ground transportation and other services that we provide, including visa services. So it's more like we, we try to create a platform or we have created a platform where customers can actually come and do their research and see what's available out there, look at different destinations, and look at who are the options, or who are the operators in those, that fly to those destinations, which are, the, which are the best hotel options, at what prices, and they're able to plan their budgets based on the information that we would provide to them on, on, on our website and our mobile platform. So for the customer, it's, it's, a, it's a very robust system. as a one-stop shop for all travel planning. At what point do you realize you are onto something really big? Before we started. Because when I lived in the U.S., I used sites like Expedia. And uh, it was very easy for me to book my travel. I traveled a lot when I was playing uh, basketball. I wanted to live in the U.S. So I used sites like Expedia. I was able to get information on all the different airline options. I was able to book hotels, I was able to book uh, ground transportation. So I was able to do everything I needed to do to travel in a very short period of time. So when I came back to Nigeria, I didn't see anything like that. And I, I obviously, I know that Nigerians travel a lot. I saw that there was no online platform in Nigeria that was consolidating all the airline, all the airlines, all the hotels. Um, the, the payment um, systems in Nigeria are very um, early stage, so people are not really paying online at that time. So everything was pretty much at a very virgin state or didn't even exist. So for me, I thought it was a huge opportunity to build an online travel platform. 
in Nigeria to be able to create some transparency to the customer. The most important thing for the customer is information uh, for them to make a decision. And most, uh, before we came in, there was no information on a transparent platform where you could plan your book your travel. Um, so I, I, saw, I saw a huge gap there, and my partner and I recognized it, so we started to do, do the build the platform. And what were the challenges that you faced at the beginning, and how did you overcome them? Well, nobody believed in what we were trying to do because it had never been done before in Nigeria. But we believe we knew what exactly we wanted to do. It took us about two years to, be, to do, build the technology, to build the, the, uh, the partnerships we required. So it was a whole lot of work for over two years of uh, trying to uh, build a platform with both the technology side and the partnership side. So getting the online airline signed up, negotiating contracts with the airline, negotiating hotels, contracts with hotels in Nigeria, which had never been online before and around the region. So there was a lot of work that went into even building the platform before we launched in 2010. So um, it was just staying very focused and knowing exactly what the game plan was and executing. And did you get any lucky breaks? Because sometimes, you know, when you're starting out, sometimes when you get a lucky break, you know, it looks like, where was this all my life? Well, it was, I call it creating your own luck because at the end of the day, you have to do the work. Creating your own luck. Yeah, so you create your own luck by doing the work and uh, every step of the way, we're able to meet someone or somebody that was able to, to help us through the, um, through the process or, or take us to the next level, whether it was a bank, uh, whether it was an investor, investment. Um, I got my father to invest in the company when we started. Um, uh, I put, we put in our own investment too, so it was a collective effort by everyone. Then when we got to the situation where we required financing, we were able to get an investor to come in in 2010 from a foreign investor to come in. And that's when the company went to a different level where we were able to attract foreign investment. You're growing quite quickly now and you operate now in five countries and plan to move to 23 African countries in the next three years, you told me. Tell me about your expansion plans. Well, our service is very unique. It's a, it's a service that is required. Most African countries don't have our service or at very early stages of our service. And we are just more than an online travel company. We realize there's so many, so many issues or so many problems we can solve for the customer. There's a, there's a huge um, potential for African travel that no one is able to do. Um, no one is able to open up the African destinations to Africans. Most of us are Africans. We travel to the UK, to the US, to other places, Dubai. So we know those, those, those markets a lot more than we know other African destinations. Uh, so there's a huge opportunity there for opening up Africa to Africans and also opening Africa to the world because um, we think that there's huge, uh, we recognize there's huge potential for African tourism, but it's been, it's been done in such a, a piecemeal manner. It's not been a consolidation of different suppliers, creating different products, opening up destinations because we are really about opening up destinations and creating the awareness for those destinations so that customers can have the information to be able to have the desire to go to, the, to, to visit those destinations. We want to open up the world to, to African travelers and, uh, the world, and uh, African tourism to the rest of the world. So it's, it's a huge challenge for us. Talking about destinations, tourism, sports tourism is one of the fastest growing areas of the global travel and tourism in industry. Why do you think Nigeria is not recognizing the prospects in sports tourism and harnessing it? If you look at the way the current sports industry in Nigeria is today, it's, it's, it's pretty much um, mostly government run. Uh, most of the um, sports, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, um, they're all mostly government run. And um, uh, I think they've done pretty much the best they can do. And um, if I look at the U.S. market, the U.S. market is, the sports is run by private investors, or private individuals. And uh, people are coming there with a business mindset to create a product. And sports is a product, uh, and uh, I don't think yet we, uh, in the Nigerian market we want to create attractive products, attracting sports, sports products that will attract this tourism, because people are not going to want to buy what they're not attracted to. And people are not going to want to go to the stadiums if the stadiums don't look nice, or the security is not, is not, is not there, or the product in the field is not up to par. That's why people watch the Premier League uh, much because the, the, the product is attractive, the talent level is very good, the production and the and the and the of the of the uh, of the matches on TV is projected at a very high level of the best talents in the world. So these are all the things that make it attractive for customers who want to pay money to go watch the matches in uh, whether it's the Premier League, whether it's the Champions League, whether it's the World Cup, whether it's the Olympics. The level of production, level of investment that is required to create a, a, an attractive, world-class standard product. It's quite intensive and we need professionalism in, in, that, in that area. Tourism generally is, seems to be one industry, one sector that we're not focusing on in Nigeria. You are in this business. Mm -hmm. Do you get um, 
inquiries from abroad about Nigeria and what are the issues surrounding tourism in Nigeria that's not making it you know, the kind of business that it should be? Well, like I said, there's a lot of hard work to be done. Um, if you look at Nigeria as a not destination, just tourism. Uh, just, I'm talking about just tourism because uh, we're talking about tourism now, just people coming to Nigeria to visit. It can be of huge potential. I'll give you an example. The Dubai UAE has done a wonderful job of transforming an oil-based economy to now a tourism economy. And uh, because they made the investment uh, of building Dubai as a city, as a tourism destination. Um, we have not made that anywhere close to that kind of level of investment, but there's still opportunities in Nigeria to be able to harness and to, and to discover those tourism destinations, those tourism assets that we have and consolidate them or consolidate, or consolidate them and create products where people can actually say, I want to go visit this destination or do, make, do this activity in Nigeria. And uh, that's what, an area that we are looking at very aggressively to develop in the next uh, very short future. We have to take a break now. Please join us again.